In this episode we are going to take a look at lifecycle methods for React's class components. So what are those? Well, those are just the methods that will fire up during the life cycle of your component. So some will fire at the beginning, some will fire when the component updates, and some will fire when the component unmounts. So in this episode we are going to take a look at the most used methods. There are a few more of them that we will not cover, but we will just cover the most used ones and the one that will give you the most bang for a buck. So let's get started. So I deleted everything from the previous episodes and now let's create our new component, which is of course going to be a class component because you can use lifecycle methods only in class components. Of course, in the next episode, I'm going to show you uh, how you can use hooks to emulate uh, those same methods. Okay, so first of all, uh, we are going to create a component called lifecycles. And now in that component, we are going to add a state. So this is going to be our state. So constructor, props, super props, this, that state is equal to counter. Of course, we are just going to create a simple counter component. And in that way, I will show you when will each of those methods fire. Okay, so for, uh, we created the constructor and our state. The next thing we want to do, we want to render something on screen. Of course, we are going to use the render method for that. Next, what I want to do is I want to create a method that will add plus one to this counter. So whenever we press this button right here, the counter will go up once. Uh, but before that, we need to define what is displaying in the button. And to do that, we'll just do this state counter. So we want to get the state of counter uh, from this. And then I want to create a method which I will call count up. And in that method, we are going to set our state. And that state is going to say counter, this state counter plus one. So whenever we press this button, our counter is going to go up. So this is just the simplest React component example. Okay, let's save this and check uh, check it out in the browser if it works. And of course, before we do that, we need to call life cycles into our application. Okay, save this and check it out. Okay, and when I click this, nothing happens because I still haven't done something. And that is to say to this button, on click, this count up. Okay, so we are calling this method right here whenever you click the button. Okay, let's just save it and check it out in the browser now. And as you can see, this works great. Now let's focus on those methods. Let's see in our component, in our in the life cycle of our component, what parts of it will fire first. So actually the thing that fires first, if you are using class components and you are using the state is whatever happens in this constructor because the component needs to set its state first. So if I go here and do and do console log, this will fire first, save it, go to our browser, you get this will fire first. Of course, I haven't proven anything because I'm console logging only this one thing and you can't actually know if this actually fires first. So to prove this, let's check out our first lifecycle method, which will be component did mount. And uh, before we do that, I just want to say one thing. So this is going to fire up first, but actually the second thing that's going to fire up in your component is actually going to be this render method. So render method is going to always fire second. And every time you update your component, the render method is going to be called. So constructor first, render second, and then component did mount is going to be third. So in this component, this will fire after the render method. And this is one of the most used lifecycle methods. And uh, you will mostly use this to either prepare the data from your API, or to initialize third party library libraries like masonry, sliders, coracells, and so on. So basically, you will use this lifecycle method whenever you need to prepare some data or something 
after so after the dom uh, initializes after the dom renders this is why this fires thread so this is going to be first the render method is going to render out the output of your component and then the component did mount will be able to do something either with the data that you are getting from the api or something with this dom right here so with these elements so that's very important to know so this will, will fire after this is put on screen which is very good if you are creating something like a carousel or uh, like if you are using a masonry, masonry plugin or something like that. So to prove this, we are just going to give... Okay, so if I save this, go to our browser, as you can see, this will fire first and this will fire third. So it's in the second place right now because we can't uh, console log out the render method. So the next method that is going to be very interesting to us is method called component did update. And as you can see, this component actually receives uh, some properties uh, which you will get when using it. So previous props, so if the props from your component changed, usually from the parent component, previous state and snapshot. I will uh, explain snapshot a bit later and this component did update method will of course fire when your component updates and your component will update when you change the state of it or if the parent component uh, sends another prop to your component then your component of false will update and when this happens this render method is actually going to fire again so that it can render your DOM. So let's just say something like, okay, save this, check it out in the browser. So uh, this will fire first, this will fire third. So this is our component did mount. And if I change something, so if I, if this counter does something and changes the state of our component, then this will fire when component updates, right? So this will always fire when component updates. Of course, there are some interesting things with this method. So if you go right here and console log previous props, previous states and snapshot, you will also get something. So let's save this and uh, check it out in the browser. So when we do this, now we are not, not getting any props. So this here is empty. We are getting an empty object. But as you can see, the counter is zero. So it's actually giving us information what our previous state was. So the counter is zero. If I do it once again, now the counter is one. So as you can see, our counter is two, but the previous state was one. And then you're getting the undefined for the snapshot. So what is a snapshot? Uh, this is, I think, one of the most useful lifecycle methods that you will run into, especially if you're doing something very complicated. Uh, so uh, the snapshot is going to be any data that will come from get snapshot before update lifecycle component. And as you can see, this get snapshot before update also has access to the previous props and to the previous state, uh, just like the component did update. But whatever happens in this method, will actually be this snapshot right here. So if I return something, so whatever you return from this method, so if we do return some data we calculated before we updated the component, save this, uh, go to our browser, and now if I update the component, as you can see, we are getting nothing for the props because we don't have them. Uh, we are getting zero for the counter and we are getting this. So whenever you know that your component is going to update and you need to do some logic or some calculation, you can do that in the get snapshot before update, uh, especially if you need to use that data for your next, next uh, cycle, for the next cycle in your component. And there is just one more lifecycle method, which is very important, and it's mostly used for cleanup. So if you had any event listeners, network requests uh, that are firing some intervals, and so on. So what you want to do, you want to clean up after yourself, of course. So when your component unmounts, 
uh, you will do uh, that cleanup, of course. And to do that, uh, you would use component will unmount method. And this method will fire when the component unmounts. Now, of course, we can't demonstrate this right away because our component is currently uh, our component doesn't currently have a way to unmount, but we can make it unmount in our actual application. So if we go to our app using the knowledge that we get from the previous episode, because as you can see, this is a functional component, uh, we can make life cycles disappear on click of a button. And to do that, uh, we are just going to do something like, so first of all, I'm going to use, use state hook, just like we learned in the previous episode, uh, to set our life cycles property and then set life cycles function. And then I'm going to add a button right here, which is going to toggle that property. So if it's true, then it's going to be false. And if it's false, it's going to be true. So I added button on click toggle life cycles and it's going to be called toggle life cycles also i added a few br tags now we need to define this toggle life cycles method so this is our method and in that method what we want to do we of course want to use another method which we defined called set life cycles and now to toggle our state all we have to do is do uh, exclamation point life cycles so what this is going to do, if the state is true, then it's just going to set it to false. And if it's false, it's going to set it to true. Of course, right now, if we just click on this button, nothing will happen because we still didn't tell React. Okay, so I want you to display this li these life cycles if uh, the life cycle state is true. And if it's false, then I don't want you to display them. And this is very pretty easy to do. You just do something like, we are going to cover this uh, in a bit more detail in some of the future episodes. But for now, what this says to React is if life cycles is true, then just display life cycles. If it's false, don't display anything. Save it, uh, check it out in the browser. So now we are getting everything we did before. If I click on this, we will get the updated function. So console log for the updated function. But now if I click on toggle life cycles, so if I toggle this from true to false, this component will disappear or will unmount. And then we should get the message that this will fire when the component unmounts. So component will unmount method toggle life cycles. And as I said, I will fire when the component unmounts. Of course, if we toggle it again, then we get everything we did before. This will fire first, this will fire third, and so on. Our component is alive again, mounted, and the life cycle begins. And this is it. These are the most used life cycle methods in React. So component did mount, component did update, uh, and component will unmount. This one, this one is not so often used, but I just wanted to show you because I think it's pretty important and it's pretty useful. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to take a look at the use effect hook and how we can emulate some of these life cycles in the functional components. But until then, remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.